All right. Um, well, it's two minutes after um, the start of the hour, so I think we will get kicked off. Um, first and foremost, thank you all for joining um, this. My name is Caitlin, and this is our very first webinar um, that's being led by our CoreLogic restoration product team. Um, really what we wanted to do today is give you a little bit of insight as to what um, is already out in the product. Most of what we will talk about today, with the exception of one sneak peek, um, is already available in our products today. So things that will hopefully help you streamline your workflows and um, kind of help you with your day-to-day -day activities. Uh, we um, are so thankful for all of you to come. We had over 500 people sign up, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm so excited to to chat with all of you today. And this is being recorded, so anyone that isn't able to join, um, we know the type of industry we're in and often get called out in at times we don't expect to. So this is being recorded for anyone that uh, needs to to check it out a little later. Um, so what we will do today is, uh, of course, we'll go through a little kickoff and introductions, and then I will um, hand it over to various team members to talk you through some of those product enhancements, um, starting off with streamlining the claim intake process, some photos and notes enhancements. We are going to do a sneak peek of our new mitigate tool. That's our new Mika naming. And then... Um, end it with some expanded reports into our uh, BI business intelligence, and then circle back around to me for a few other um, questions and comments. Um, today's speakers, as I said, my name is Caitlin. I am the VP of product here at CoreLogic for our restoration space, and I will show you what all of those products entail here in just a minute. Um, other speakers you'll hear from Yesenia Garcia, who is our product manager for Restoration Administer, also known as Dash Admin, Paige Polovsky, who's our product manager for Restoration Workspace, also known as Dash, Clark Hawkins, who is our senior product manager for Restoration Mitigate, also known as Mika, and Kelly Savage, who is our director of product for BI and reporting. And you may have heard me say, workspace and administer, and you're probably thinking, what is that? Um, if you didn't know, we are going through a rebranding of all of our applications. So you will start to see and hear these different names. Um, these are everything that you see here on the page is what falls under the CoreLogic restoration um, house. We're, on, we're only going to talk about a few of those today. We simply just don't have time to talk about all of them. There's, there's a ton of of content here. And you know, think of this as a little bit of tip of the iceberg. I'm happy to get into more details in the future with any one of you. Um, but the ones that we'll focus on specifically uh, there at the top is Workspace, again, also known as Dash, Administer, previously known as Dash Admin, Mitigate, which is our new Mika tool. That one's probably the easiest uh, for all of us to remember because there is going to be a brand new application that will be released, which will be fully branded with the new Mitigate um, information. And then uh, last but not least, um, sort of sitting underneath all of these is our workspace intelligence or our BI. Um, and that's that is what Kelly will walk us through there at the end. A quick housekeeping, if you do have questions, uh, the Q&A section in Zoom is available. Go ahead and drop any questions that you have in there. We will try our best to answer them either um, through text or at the very end uh, of this session. If we do run out of time, we can always um, send those to you in an offline mode as well. We absolutely love feedback. Actually, this webinar is based on some feedback that we received, um, specifically that the pop-ups and various release notes that we send out uh, don't always get into the right hands and folks aren't sure of new uh, functionality that we're putting out. So, you know, we work a, a long time on this functionality and we want to make sure that it's available for all of you to utilize. And only way you can do that is if you know about it. So happy to bring this webinar to you. Um, we would love the feedback about this particular webinar. Um, if there's other topics that you would like to hear more from us about. And then, of course, um, how this went overall. 
And speaking of feedback, um, a little bit of some feedback from the numbers that we've seen in the past. So 877, that's the number of development tickets that have been released this year to date. Um, and actually, it's probably this year to the end of August, so that's definitely ticked up quite a bit more. So nearly 900 items that we've released this year. A lot of those are from all of you. Um, and so that second number, 455, that's the number of AHA tickets. AHA is our platform that allows um, you to log in and um, share your ideas about our products, vote on other ideas from others that have already entered um, some ideas. And we listen to that very closely. We, we look at that information and that helps us change and, and kind of give us a little bit of the pulse on the market to shift our roadmap. It's obviously not the only thing that we work on, but it does absolutely help. So 455 are the number of tickets that were released last year. Um, so not directly related even to that 877. So huge numbers uh, and information coming from you. That also doesn't include the number of votes that were counted on top of that 455. So that's 455 unique items that we heard from the market that we tackled last year. And one of those big things that we tackled last year and continue to tackle this year is um, we heard that the Workspace Mobile or Dash um, NGS mobile app, uh, the crash reduction needed to be to be looked at. So we've actually reduced that 76% month over month. Okay. Hopefully you're all feeling that in your day to day as well. If you don't know about AHA, as I mentioned, it is that portal that you can share your ideas and vote on other ideas. Um, and if you don't have access to that today, we can change that pretty quick. Um, all you got to do is uh, let support know that you want to participate. You can use that help button that's available in Dash or Workspace. You will get an email from support at aha.io. So if you see that top here, if you can see my cursor um, where it says you are invited, you will get an email that looks like that. That is a real email. It is not spam. Um, and that was how you're going to create your password. After that, you're in and you can start voting and giving us information. Um, maybe a little foreshadowing of what we're going to talk about today, but you can see there in that bottom screenshot, um, 218 people previously voted on wanting photo labeling. 128 asked for the ability to copy notes across all tabs. And 58 um, asked to export on the photo sheet export to have larger photos. Um, quick hint, all of those things have been done and have been released. So you do have all access to all of that today. All right, all right I will stop talking. I'm going to turn it over to Yesenia to talk you through uh, workspace or dash and specifically streamlining the claim intake. Go ahead, Yesi. Perfect. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, like Caitlin said earlier, I'm Yesenia, and I've been with the company since around 2017. Um, so depending on how long you guys have been with us, you would have seen me anywhere from support to product. Um, so hi. And today I'm super excited to talk to you guys about uh, the CoreLogic Enriched Property Data, right? So this feature truly does bring the benefit of CoreLogic data um, to your hands, right? So how often... Are you guys receiving a claim? And then whenever you receive that claim, you have to go and you have to search for the year built. Now, when you choose an address, when you're intaking a claim and you choose an address from the auto field selection, you're going to be connecting to the CoreLogic Enriched Property Data, and that will automatically fill in that year built for you. So you do not have to go look for it anymore. If you have workflows that are targeted towards that year built, automatically done, right? Um, if you have protocols in your company that are kicked off based on that year built, you just no longer have to go and hunt that information down. It's there immediately for you. You will immediately have it. Um, and that is truly just time saving and it's immediately impactful, right? You can get that information. And then another wonderful benefit of CoreLogic uh, property data is that you can have a view into the loss before you even step foot in there. So we love, you know, having to, to get claims and whatnot, but there are times when a home requires just, just a bit more experience and, and we love all of our techs, but in those cases, you might want to send a bit more of your senior technicians, right? They may have a bit more experience 
and you might want them to take take a look, right? So um, your new techs might still be learning the ropes, uh, and in certain cases, that that might not be the best case um, to have someone out there. So having that view into the home can really give you that advantage uh, because you're able to review those property details, right? You can see photos of what it looked like pre-loss, um, and you may notice things that a customer may not give you on the phone. Um, maybe your technicians are going to need specialized equipment. Maybe the layout of the home is a bit quirky and you're going to need a bit more of that, like, huh, the normal, you know, what we normally would do wouldn't work here. Um, and so being able to view into the home prior to going in there, you know, it's really, um, it's really going to, to simplify life a bit, um, and get your customers that amazing customer service that, you know, I'm sure that you guys are used to, used to giving. Um, so there's not a lot more to say about that um, at the moment. It really is what you make out of it, um, but the amount of information in there is amazing, and we've had some amazing feedback off of it. So with that being said, <laughs> I have some questions for you all. So the first one, I want to know how many of you were aware that this feature was out there? I think this feature was released in the spring. Um, so of the 100... 30-ish of you. Um, how many of you guys knew that? And let me see if I can kick off. There we go. If you guys can go ahead and vote. Oh, look at that. Going. Now I'll give it just a second. All right. Uh, looks like the, the numbers have slowed down as to who is answering. So uh, a 56 percent, 57 percent say they weren't aware and, and 43 say they have been. Um, so call that as close to 50 50 as we're probably going to get in a, a large group like this, which is really interesting. So for that 50 percent that hasn't um, seen this before, please go check it out. Um, give us some feedback. We'd, we'd really be interested in that. Yeah, and if you guys need to know how to access it, contact our support. Um, they will immediately be able to help you guys um, get that uh, activated. And it should be there, but um, it might need a permission or two. So they'll be able to tell you guys where that permission lies. So support would be more than happy to, to, to take care of that. So of that 44% that said that you guys have, um, the next question is going to be for you guys. How frequently do you guys utilize this feature? And let me see if I can get that poll going. Let's see. Is the poll popping up for question two? You don't see it. <laughs> it's still showing poll number one. All right, we may have to drop that one and maybe ask at the end. Oh, oh. there it goes. Perfect. All right. So for those that answered yes to the first question, how frequently do you normally utilize that uh, that pop up, that CoreLogic property button? All right, a pretty decent mix from what I'm seeing. Yeah. There's still a few folks answering. Um, I am going to end the poll and let me share the results. So you should be able to see that on our screen. So a little bit of every day um, to never, um, but that's great for, for those that are using it every day. That's amazing. Um, one or more times a week, 18%. I mean, quite a bit from those of you that know about this that are utilizing this on a regular basis. Um, so, I mean, that's great feedback. I, we really do hope that that's making your lives easier, whether it's the automated um, display of information and, and filling in those fields, as you said, you mentioned, or it's just clicking that button and checking out those previous photos and, and notes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Uh, that's it for me. But if there's any questions at all, always reach out. We, as Caitlin said, love feedback. Um, AHA is our best friend. We hope it becomes your best friend. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Sonia. 
All right, and next we're going to turn it over to Paige to talk about some photos and notes enhancements also in Restoration Workspace. Go ahead, Paige. Yeah, hi, I'm Paige Wolsowski. I've also been with CoreLogic since around 2017. Um, I'm excited to show you guys a handful of enhancements throughout Restoration Workspace that we've made within the past year. Uh, to go off this whole AHA request, the first one actually was an AHA request that received 200 votes from our users. To really iterate how truly we appreciate this feedback, we use it to enhance our product, such as in the steps of saving you time during your day. Uh, we've added the ability to copy notes from one division to another or even to another job. So for example, you're going through your list of jobs for the day. You may have a job that was delayed due to the customer not being available or couldn't be reached. With this enhancement, you can easily create that note, state the delay, and easily copy it over to any necessary divisions at the time of entry. Or if you have a note that's already existing on the job, you can easily copy that to another division or even another job in just a couple of steps. Uh, next slide, Caitlin. And then this slide just shows you kind of what the pop-ups look like for the copy notes um, across divisions to across divisions and to the jobs, as well as what it looks like within the new within the add new note um, section. Okay. Next slide. And then our next enhancement uh, we've made to restoration workspace has been starting to incorporate some artificial intelligence within the photos um, section of uh, workspace. So as we all know, photos are necessary to your day to day. So why not let us help you capture those details through auto tagging um, through our image analytics feature. So when a photo is uploaded, uh, the photo goes through our AI engine and is auto tagged with um, any information it finds through that, um, about that photo, sorry. Um, so for example, you took a picture of your kitchen. It has builder grade cabinets. Our AI engine will automatically tag it builder grade and kitchen. So when you're reviewing those photos later, at a quick glance, you can see what roughly what the contents is of those photos, which speeds up your day, which is nice to have. We are currently continuing to enhance this product so with tagging and just image analytics all together. So please be on the lookout in the future for um, some more to come. Yeah, and that's right. We've, we've seen, heard a lot of great feedback on this one with the ability to just quickly scroll down that list and see um, just by the word, sometimes your eyes catch a, a word faster than a, a part of that image. So you can find that information faster that way. And then lastly, we've made a handful of small updates to the job slide board. So first we have in the accounting section added hyperlinks. So you can click these links and they'll quickly jump you to the correct page um, to gather more information or more detailed information. So on any dollar amount or the estimated gro gross profit percentage that's now in that blue bold um, text, those are now hyperlinks. And on the slide here, it shows you what those hyperlinks and what the hyperlinks are and they what page it navigates will navigate you to in hopes to save you time during your day. Uh, the next thing we have added or um, changed, I guess, uh, we made a small configuration update uh, to the add estimate option. So based on company settings and permissions, you can now create an estimate without being required to add a PDF. So any of those times you need to create a $0 estimate, you no longer have to add that blank PDF based off the requirement. And last but not least, we've added um, the ability to filter off of status on compliance tasks. So you can now filter by pending, warning, or overdue. So say you wanna knock out all those overdue um, Compliance tasks, first, you can easily select that filter, knock out those um, tasks, and then move on to the next. Uh, we have implemented this 
change to the compliance task on the job slide board, as well as the compliance manager page under the more menu. Um, I appreciate your time. This is all the enhancements I have for uh, restoration workspace today, uh, but we hope these usability improvements really save you guys time and have a significant impact on your day-to-day. -day. Um, I do want to call out one other uh, improvement that we are looking into. Um, we're improving the photos work workflow in restoration workspace and would love to get some feedback. Uh, so I have one quick survey question. Um, so what specific aspects of the photos workflow would you like to see improved or changed? We'll get that poll up here in just a sec. Um, and so those answers options are photo PDF improvements, um, upload and organization, user interface, and navigation, specifically on the web tool, uh, kind of conversely, the mobile app experience, um, or other. And this is like uh, pick your pick your um, top. Um, it is a multiple choice, I believe. Question. Really interested to hear this. We, we've heard a lot of feedback in this photo space, and this is an area that we are currently making changes to. Uh, and then we are looking at where to make changes next. And as expected, the it's pretty much in line with what I we were chatting about offline page. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like most of the um, answers are slowing down. So I'm going to hit end poll. Um, and I'll share those results. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so not surprising at all um, that the two biggest are around upload and organization and then that mobile app experience. Um, so a lot more to come in those areas. Um, thank you for that. That does help give us a little bit of insight of where we should be focusing our time. We are looking at making changes to all of these. Um, so this is not a um, you tell us where you're thinking and we only focus on one of them ultimately, but it does give us a sense of where to go next. Um, and thank you, Paige, for going through that. Um, as Paige said, those are a number of our um, minor, more minor enhancements on that previous slide, especially to the slide board that we wanted to bring to your attention. Um, we continue to make changes in, in those um, kind of small usability areas where we can. Those are just a few that we wanted to highlight that uh, I know have had a big impact. I think those each of those had quite a few number of votes as well in our AHA system. All right, next up, I'm gonna turn it over to Clark to talk about Mitigate, a quick sneak peek into that new tool. Go ahead, Clark. Thanks, Caitlin. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm delighted to be sharing um, this exciting update to the Mika product with you all today. Um, this is a sneak peek at something that has been in the works for uh, quite a while now, uh, going on two years. Um, may or may not have come from an aha. Um, I think the the uh, large perception about Mika was that, hey, can we make this thing easier to use? Um, so if Caitlin, you can jump to the next slide, please. Um, so we set out to totally redefine um, the Mika mobile app experience. Um, and this is a first stepping stone into a larger effort to really just make everything easier and simpler um, when you're performing uh, documentation out in the field. Um, so, you know, for those of you who are using Mika today, um, this is going to be a completely reimagined um, sort of workflow within the, the documentation platform. Um, and as Caitlin mentioned earlier, um, we are also, uh, this, this release will coincide with a completely rebranded uh, Mika name. So uh, we'll start calling it um, CoreLogic Restoration Mitigate. Um, and so the vision with this this redesign project, um, you know, and I, I jokingly said it came from an aha, it, it, it did, right? Uh, I think the the wide kind of general consensus was that you know if if this was easier to use then i would use this for every single mitigation project not just program jobs that require me to supply mika documentation um, and so we set out on this adventure uh, to redesign the mika experience from the ground up um, to make that a reality right um, to give our contractor users some you know a not only a useful tool uh, that you know it makes sense that i have to collect this 
data point and that data point and these photos and those photos and get these forms signed and those forms signed. You know, it all sounds simple, but for the amount of data collection that has to take place um, on your average mitigation project, it's a whole lot to do. Um, and if your application is sort of a barrier to completing all of that information, I'm less likely to use it. And so, you know, some of these new changes that we've done, it, it does include, it's completely from the ground up. So we, we've, it's not just a facelift. It is, everything is new in it. Um, and we've we've presented a new workflow that's going to allow you to kind of stick more closely to what's going on on the job without having without having Mika telling you what you need to document. Um, it's sort of more of an open dashboard style in, interface um, that is modernized um, and it's consistent across all of your device types now um, with a streamlined user experience with the end goal to make it simpler for technicians. Um, There's some other improvements. Um, that, that come from a lot of feedback from the industry around, um, you know, sort of the tedious process of having to, and sometimes unmanageable process of having to, you know, press a button to sync that information to the cloud. Um, so we'll be introducing some automated um, syncing so that as you're capturing rooms and damage information and readings, it's automatically going up to the cloud. Um, and as I mentioned, consistent across all device types. Um, so no longer will you have to, you know, train one technician who's on an Android how to use it on Android and another technician who's on iOS how to use it on iOS, right? Um, it's going to be the same across all device types, um, which will include one market improvement um, around sketching and diagramming, um, which we'll um, be delighted to show you guys uh, soon. Um, so if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so this next couple of slides, just wanted to show you all some examples of what this modernized UI looks like. Um, you know, on the left, you can see the previous version of Mika that was on an Android phone, um, which is worth mentioning, looked a lot different than on an iPhone. Um, so with our consistent uh, UI, um, we're presenting all of this information in a, in a much more modernized way that that kind of correlates to other applications you may use in your day-to-day -day life, right? Our objective here was to create a consistent um, process, not just isolated in the vacuum of restoration, but across your entire sort of ecosystem of apps that you use on your phone on a daily basis, right? Um, to create those mental maps. Um, so if you could jump to the next slide, please. Um, and we spent a lot of time, you know, there is, like I mentioned, so much data that needs to be collected um, on your given mitigation project. Uh, and so we wanted to step away from this sort of regimented way of here, collect your dates, collect your forms. Uh, while we've retained this sort of uh, list uh, kind of step, step by step process um, as an option here, we wanted to provide a dashboard view of everything that's going on on the project. Um, so I can, depending on my role in the organization, I can see a summary of what's going on. Uh, or if I'm a technician, I can drive into a room and uh, view the information for that specific room uh, from your equipment, moisture content and atmospheric conditions um, to any you know of the broader topics like getting forms signed, supplying notes. Um, and so introducing more of a free flow workflow um, that conforms to your expectations of how you want to enter data rather than uh, having a software tell you what you need to do. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and here's another example of just the, the modernization of the UI, um, making it a little easier to identify what exactly I'm looking at and what does the application want me to do here? Um, so, you know, as an example, when I'm looking at equipment, um, I can see my chambers, the rooms within those chambers, my equipment recommendations, all on one screen. I, I have reduced the number of clicks in order to navigate throughout the app and see the information that matters to me. And that makes sense to show up in, in a given section of the app. You know, at this stage, I might want to be able to validate that I, I've applied the appropriate number of air movers to a room um, or the appropriate amount of dehumidification to an overall chamber. Um, next slide, please, Caitlin. Thank you. 
Um, and of course, you know, the, the bread and butter of our, of our documentation is all of those readings that we have to collect. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not changed, you know, we're not reducing how many moisture points you need to collect or how much atmospheric data you need to collect. We're just making it easier to do that. Um, you know, depending on the size of the project, you might need to capture 10 moisture points or you might need to capture a hundred. And we really wanted to streamline this entire process and make it easier. Um, you know, with the previous version of Mika, which is, uh, showing up on the left side of your screen here, you know, you can see it. It's not clear to me what it, what is even my starting point, right? Um, and so another part of this goal, it's kind of a double-edged sword here, if you will. You know, we wanted not only to make it easier for your seasoned technicians who you know know what data needs to be collected to collect that data faster, uh, but for maybe your more novice uh, restorers who are new to the industry, that there's a clear-cut kind of way for me to follow this process without it being spoon-fed to me. Um, and so trying to make this UI intuitive um, and the user experience easy uh, was primary in our in our objective here. And so a, a couple of things that you can look out for is a new uh, quick entry screen where once I've established my where I'm collecting readings from, I can quickly enter the next visit's readings, um, a, a fully customized uh, keyboard for when I'm collecting those readings that groups my temperature and relative humidity together. Uh, so reducing the number of clicks um, and even some intelligence around when I'm capturing a photo of something, it's automatically tagged uh, based on where I've initiated that photo capture from. Um, and an immense amount of time um, and discussion and research went into what's the best way to present uh, all of these atmospheric readings to the user out in the field so that they can make effective decisions about the drying process. Um, and so we, we've we really kind of gone into the realm of what we're familiar with when I'm looking at, let's say, a traditional sort of Excel spreadsheet of a chart, right, uh, of a drying chart, where I want to see sequentially um, each day's readings oriented vertically, right? That's what we're trained on. That's what we learn. Uh, and that's what we're familiar with. So why reinvent the wheel and overcomplicate it? And so with our, with our atmospherics table, you're able to compare readings because obviously, you know, a, a reading isolated on its own doesn't mean anything to me. I, I get value in understanding what that reading means in context with and comparison to other readings. Um, so we really wanted to give our users a, a way to make effective decisions out in the field with our new um, atmospherics reading table. Um, so those are just a few examples uh, of some of the changes. You know, I think what what Yesenia and, and Paige were showing you guys were awesome new features um, within an application um, that that in some cases were submitted by you guys. Um, and I think in this case, we've got a whole slew of features to share with you uh, over the next few months. Um, as we uh, step into the new year with a completely redesigned Mika. Um, so with that, I don't think I have any more slides, Caitlin. I think you can jump to the next one. And no wow. polls either. Thank you, Clark. And and that it is, you sort of answered it already, um, but just to highlight it, it does tend to be usually the very next question is, wait, when can I get my hands on this? Um, so as Clark said, um, look for this into the new year. Um, you know, we very much expect to be, this will be part of our interconnect show and, and talking through a lot of, if you are in the water mitigation track, um, talking through a lot of um, the information and the intelligence that went into this and how you can then use this to um, kick off your year and, and uh, work on your with your day-to-day, -day, how you would use this. Awesome. And next up, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly to talk about um, some of our workspace intelligence and specifically some new expanded reports. Go ahead, Kelly. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Caitlin. Uh, I recognize um, as a director of uh, product for BI that uh, your data is critical. And so is your reporting to your decision decision making process. Um, and, you know, overall, the, the, the satisfaction of our products you know, this depends on the data that you receive. Um, I'm excited to um, share some recent improvements that, um, aimed at providing this richer, more um, actionable data that, um, that we try to make with our uh, BI product uh, flexible enough to add data as we get requested and also as products change. So first off, the work order information data set, we added um, line item amount, cost, over rate, cost rate override, and gross profit percentage. 
Um, these new fields will enable you to now analyze your work orders by line item um, and aiding in your budget analysis. Um, next up, the, the uh, equipment usage data set. Uh, this is an expanded data set. We added 18 new fields, including barcode equipment type, start end dates, move dates, and total usage amongst others. Um, you can now generate more detailed equipment tracking reports in our BI tool, um, providing you insights beyond with beyond, beyond counts and put by equipment type. That was a common um, uh, reporting before. Um, in timesheets, we have added the pay rate, the pay rate type information. Um, this enables you to track um, your uh, track and analyze overtime versus regular time. So over specific periods, um, it would add depth to your um, uh, labor uh, cost evaluations. And then um, the provider uh, location information, we, this was an enhancement um, to, to support a feature, feature that allows uh, franchisees to, um, uh, uh, to indicate when they're operating at full capacity. So we have the add, add capacity for it. And then the uh, estimate data set, um, the sent to and approved by dates, um, either by adjuster or customer, has been added. And these were this was added as a part of the feature for um, estimate tra tracker information. Um, and you can all now include these in your estimates reporting um, in your estimates reporting to monitor and compare adjustments on the job. Um, we continue to try, try to um, enhance and enable you to create your own reports. Our main goal is to create a versatile BI reporting um, at re BI reporting, and so you can adjust to your to your needs. And we also um, try to make it as flexible as we can again to um, to evolve at as in response to um, your um, your uh, request through AHA, and then also through product changes as we make improvements along the way. And I'm open to any questions or feedback um, to um, help you um, meet your data needs. Absolutely. Yeah, if you do have questions, I'll extend that offer. If you do have questions around your data and um, how to access it, what information, what intelligence you can glean from it, uh, please reach out through the support channel. Uh, you will likely ultimately get to either Kelly or one of our customer success team members that are specialized in BI uh, to help answer a lot of those questions for you. Thank you so much, Kelly. All right, um, we do have a few more slides, so please don't go anywhere, but um, I will start to wrap this up. Uh, hopefully what you heard us talking about today matches with uh, these product themes, but I wanted to bring these up specifically and make sure that um, you are all aware of, of what we really focus on. So we we walked through a number of enhancements ac um, across our product set today, or, and um, most of those are going to fall into one of these five categories. Not, I mean, guaranteed not every item that we work on, certainly not everything that comes from AHA is going to be specifically in one of these categories. So this is not meant to be an exhaustive list, but this think of this more as uh, when we, what we hear from all of you, what we hear from conversations is these are the five key areas that are going to help you with your ultimate success. And so these are the five key areas when information comes up, when suggestions come up around these areas that we focus on extensively and that we really try to build in um, time out in our roadmap at, in our product development for them. So just wanted to touch on each one uh, a little bit slower than what you may have heard in the past. So first is going to be that CoreLogic product interoperability which really means just bringing our solutions together more seamlessly. Um, for example, bringing in that CoreLogic property data button that Yesenia talked about. Um, and there's several enhancements within Mitigate that fall along those lines as well. Um, part of the Mitigate solution will then be further extended into pulling together Mitigate and Workspace or Dash. So Mika and Dash, we have a longer term roadmap to pull those together and I wanted to call that out. Um, very specifically, Mitigate, we knew that we had to get out some functionality to improve the user interface. And that was our primary focus to start. 
but it also included the underpinnings of a number of interoperability opportunities, which you will see after we launch. There is absolutely some things that have recently come out as well around there. For example, you can now sync dates from Mika into Dash. So Dash previously never accepted dates into the system, and now that's available. That came out what, two weeks ago, I want to say. Moving on to the second item, the restoration workspace core job documentation. That's going to be a lot of what Paige talked about with um, photos and notes, documents, et cetera. So we continue to enhance those areas and are looking to further make some significant changes, especially in usability around those areas. Of course, Clark talked about restoration mitigate um, and the, the full revamp. So I think we, we exhausted that topic already. Connecting the industry is number four. Uh, by the way, these are in no particular order, just what fits on the page easily. Um, but, but two ways that we really focus on connecting the industry. So one is within our products, providing that data flow between carriers and contractors. Certainly that's part of interoperability as well. When we think beyond just the restoration space, we start to think about the, the larger core logic space and, and providing data back through Claims Connect or um, QA Assist, which is now becoming Validate, for example. So, and, and really trying to pull the carrier contractor worlds together that and, and create that larger ecosystem and reduce friction. Um, we also are doing that through additional integrations, and you'll see that over time um, as we build out that larger ecosystem. The second way that we connect the industry, and I'll touch on this more in just a second, is physically getting all of those parties together. We know that the industry hasn't always been kind to each other. Uh, there's been a lot of friction between carrier and contractor, and but we believe that there is a conduit to reduce that significantly. Um, and I'll, I'll touch on that here more in just a minute. And then um, number five is going to be that automation and AI. I mean, certainly you heard um, Paige and Yesenia both talk about AI, uh, but we absolutely include the research around machine learning and AI and then ultimately the use of those tools in our products. A lot of that goes on in the background. Um, and then the, the ultimate result is some type of automation in the solution, whether that's maybe filling in a field automatically or something like that. Okay. So of those, I do have a quick poll. Let me see if we can get that pulled up. Um, I'd love to hear from you all on which of those are the most important to you. And I believe this is a multi-select item, um, but which of the CoreLogic restoration product themes are most important to you? So if it's all of them, I mean, feel free to select them all, but really interested to understand, is it that interoperability, the core job documentation, mitigate, connecting the industry, or automation and AI? And I'll give everyone a little time to to get those answers locked in. All right. Looks like still a few are adding. Starting to slow down though. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and so I can share those results. And hopefully you can see that. Um, so, so this, since this was a uh, a multiple choice, there, the percentages obviously don't add up specifically to 100. But if we look at all of this, inter very interesting to see core job documentation um, and then mitigate as those top two. Those are both around that usability aspect. So very much in line with what we've been working on. Um, and I will give you another sneak peek that there's a lot more um, coming down the pipe around core job documentation and usability um, very soon as well. We, things we can't quite uh, talk about just yet, but you'll see in the product soon enough. Awesome, thank you for that. That really does help. Um, any All this feedback does help us uh, move forward and understand what to focus on. And let's see if it'll move. Oops, there it goes. 
Um, as I mentioned, there are a lot of additional things that we would love to talk to you about. Um, of course, we do have limited time today, but also a number of items that aren't quite ready for prime time. Um, and a number of those will be um, announced and shown off at our Interconnect show that's going to be in January. So this is year number two of Interconnect. Um, Hopefully you all were able to join last year, but if you haven't, this is a reimagined event that was really intended to bring together um, the best of what we previously called CoreLogic's Open House and um, connect and bring this together so that, again, we are trying to um, mold the carrier TPA contractor worlds all together for a one-of-a-kind experience that allows everyone a, a seat at the table. Um, where we can work together to figure out what should we be working on next and how can the, these very disparate entities come together to um, to be successful to ultimately help the customer, right? Help that homeowner, that, um, that property owner. Um, so if you found value in this hour, I very much invite you to join us at Interconnect. Um, this hour was a small sliver of what we prepare for Interconnect, and I truly mean small sliver this there's so much work that goes into interconnect and so many amazing um, announcements that we are preparing for that show i cannot wait for it um it's i know i'm biased here but it is the most exciting uh conference in this industry every year it's a ton of fun um so with the contractor space what we do is we actually break out um each of the contractors into a um into role based tracks and then we tailor the content for those roles um most of those tracks do include a product session similar to this but it'll be tailored to your specific role um so even in today's session we we tried to narrow it down to a couple of roles but of course we we kind of hit on water mitt tech and um, coordinator and a little bit for information for GM and, and we tailor that down even further so that we can spend more time on some very specific enhancements um, and features that that make sense for each of those groups. Okay. All right. And I move this other item out of my way. There we go. So I can get to the um, and that's all the content we have today. Thank you so much for joining. I really, truly appreciate it. Um, thank you for all the feedback. Um, there will be a one question survey that will appear when this webinar ends. Um, and that's, we wanted to give you all a little bit more time to respond. It is an open-ended question, um, which is what is the biggest pain point you experience at work that you believe um, our products could help with and you'd like to see changed or improved in our products. Um, and with that, actually, uh, MC, I didn't know, are there any items, any questions in the Q&A since we do have five minutes or so? There have been a lot of great questions come up in the Q&A and our team has been answering them um, through the Q&A feature. So I don't know if James or Clark, you wanna to touch on any of those or, um, just letting everybody know, we'll send a follow-up email that compiles those, uh, you know, FAQs for those good questions you guys are asking. Perfect. All right. Um, with that, then I will end the webinar. Thank you so much. We hope to do this again soon um, and reach out to us at any time. Have a good one, everyone.